It's difficult to know exactly what education will be like when this little fella grows up, but we do know that it'll be very different from what it was when his parents went to school. Back in the agricultural age, education was centred around artisans or cottage industries, and it was immediate, localised and specific. The industrial age brought education 2.0, focused on producing a lot of people who could read a bit, write a bit and do some basic mathematics, thereby ensuring a plentiful supply of labour for factories. Education 3.0 is a relatively recent development and has emerged to equip learners to succeed in an increasingly fast-paced, increasingly technological world. The rise of creative industries, a move towards personalisation, free access to information and a tsunami of low-cost computers means our world is rapidly changing. Alvin Toffler describes the post-industrial age as being one that's based on actionable knowledge as a primary resource. The challenge for education is one of completely reinventing itself in a very short space of time to keep pace with these changes. But James Lengel offers us a possible pathway when he describes a set of six defining features of Education 3.0. Often in school, students are set questions their teachers already know the answer to. In an increasingly rapidly evolving world where new knowledge is being created every day and old understandings are being constantly questioned and challenged, the trick lies in students working alongside teachers on real world problems. In such an open-ended environment, tools like ePortfolios do a better job of recording the rich, divergent, multimedia story of a student's progress towards a goal than a traditional pen and paper test does. If the industrial model of schooling was about knowledge transfer, Education 3.0 is as much about knowledge creation. And while it will always be important to know stuff, in a rapidly evolving world, teachers and students need to collaborate productively through a constant process of learning, unlearning and relearning. Technology also helps us to collaborate with those beyond our four walls, with low-cost, high-definition video cameras and ultra-fast broadband offering us the ability to collaborate with almost anyone anywhere in the world. One of the features of education for a long time was that everyone learned roughly the same thing at roughly the same speed, allowing students to direct their learning towards areas of learning that are meaningful for them gives them the best opportunity to be successful, which in turn spurs on further, more challenging learning. It's like comparing a one-size-fits-all textbook with something like a wiki or an adaptive learning system, where learners can reconfigure the content based on what they already know and what they want to learn next. Multiliteracies, the ability to read and write, the ability to convey an idea with still images or video, the ability to move a group of people towards action. This is the power of how to tell a good story. With powerful online editing tools such as YouTube's built-in video editor, students can shoot high-definition video on a mobile phone, upload it to YouTube, edit it anywhere on any device, and share it with the whole world. Low-cost digital tools mean students now have a very powerful suite from which to choose when solving problems. If you're researching braided river systems, students should be able to compare the relative strengths of using something like Google Earth with using a reference book or an atlas, choosing the right tool for the job. Being able to zoom in and out, spin the earth around, add extra pieces of information and share their findings with someone else makes the use of Google Earth a very powerful tool for understanding our world. And when we look at some of the teenage success stories over the last few years, particularly in the technology industry, we see students who are curious about the world and creative enough to be able to build solutions to the problems they see around them. And perhaps this is the defining feature of Education 3.0, the opportunity for curious, confident, engaged learners to bring their own questions about the world, questions that aren't in any textbook, and to work alongside others, students, their teachers and the wider community to answer those questions. Perhaps that's the kind of education our kids will have. It's certainly the education they need if they're going to keep pace with this rapidly changing world.